Theatrical TV Movies I've always loved the idea of taking a TV show and giving it the theatrical treatment. It's so exciting to see your favorite cartoon get that big budget upgrade. It's a quality you don't usually see on TV. But we don't really see these types of movies as much as we used to, though. Why is that? Back in 1998, we had the Rugrats movie. I actually talked about this one in my last video about Jimmy Neutron. The Rugrats movie, as discussed in my last video, was an overwhelming success. Back then, Rugrats was Nickelodeon's first big hit. Just like how Spongebob is, at one point of time, Rugrats was a household name. And its big success in the theaters would of course lead to imitators. This of course gave to the idea of, why make something original when you can take an already existing brand, shove it into the big screen and see how many tickets we can sell? It seemed like a good idea at the time. And so we had Rugrats, Spongebob, Rugrats again, Rugrats again, Wild Thornberry, South Park, Hey Arnold, Pokemon, Doug's first movie. Really? Doug? Recess. Does anyone remember that? I never watched that show. What the fuck is Teacher's Pet doing here? What the fuck is this? You know, Spongebob and Rugrats, I can understand. Just like Rugrats, Spongebob went on to have three of these things. And it really shows by Rugrats' third movie, popularity was really starting to dwindle with the box office turnout. The success was definitely not as big as the others. Spongebob was Nickelodeon's next big icon. It only made sense to make this movie, and it really shows because it's still going to this day. Just like The Simpsons, it is never going to go away. But what I don't understand is what is Teacher's Pet and Recess doing here? Shouldn't these be, like, relegated to TV only? The Hey Arnold movie isn't even theatrical quality. It's literally a TV movie slapped in the big screen. Now, I think this was really a big thing in the 2000s. Yes, theatrical TV movies did exist before this, but Rugrats really started that trend going forward for the next few years. I don't think we would have gotten the South Park movie without this trend. Heck, South Park probably wouldn't even be here today without the movie. In a way, I guess Rugrats saved South Park? Okay, maybe that's really pushing it. <laughs> now today I want to talk about a specific movie that came out because of this trend. Nickelodeon and Disney threw their fair share of these movies out there, but what about Cartoon Network? Sugar. Spice. And everything nice. These were the ingredients chosen to create the perfect little girl. But Professor Utonium accidentally added an extra ingredient to the concoction. Nitroglycerin. The Powerpuff Girls. Next to Dexter's Lab, it's one of the most iconic shows Cartoon Network has ever made. Starting from 1998, it was extremely popular as a primetime television series and would go on to have six seasons going to 2005. It was a huge success on TV, and it's still remembered to this day as a pop culture icon in animation. So it was with this, in 2002, following this huge trend on theatrical TV movies, The Powerpuff Girls was coming to the big screen. This was Cartoon Network's first theatrical release ever. This was a big deal for that reason. And at this time in Cartoon Network's life, The Powerpuff Girls was one of their biggest shows. It was heavily marketable, merchandise sold very well, so it seemed like a no-brainer. And so, on July 3rd, 2002, the Powerpuff Girls movie hit theaters. And it bombed. With an $11 million budget and $20 million spent on marketing, the Powerpuff Girls walked away with only $16 million worldwide, barely making over the amount it cost to make the movie. It's the Powerpuff Girls. How can something so popular on TV flop like this? And hypothetically speaking, if this movie was successful, we could have gotten more Cartoon Network movies in theaters like this. Can you imagine an Ed, Ed and Eddie movie in theaters? I want to live in that universe where that happens. After this big flop, any planned theatrical movies they were planning on making would either be cancelled or turned into a TV movie. And that's really it. The movie came, bombed, and went. Now why is that? How did this movie bomb? Was it a bad movie or was it good? Let's take a look. Let's do a run through of the movie itself and look at the plot. Now before we start, I have to look at this absolutely genius opening. Like, look at this monkey destroying stuff with the opening credits showing up. TV for Cartoon Network, the tape recordings for voice actors, paper for writers, art direction, and the clock for animation direction. I don't know, I just really think that's smart. So anyway, the Powerpuff Girls movie is an origin story. It's the first week they were born, and how they became the superhero girls we see in the show. These first few scenes are just so wonderful. They spend a good bit of time setting things up. The first part of the movie is just so light-hearted. And I gotta mention, the pacing of this movie is perfect, if not on par with the show. The movie just keeps going and going. It's very good. Now, story-wise, the motivation. Tag! 
You're it! The girls unknowingly destroy the city by playing tag. Because of this, everyone hates them now. They were literally just born like yesterday and already everyone hates them. So this brings on the motivation for the girls to prove themselves to the town so everyone no longer hates them. This actually brings on some really emotional scenes. It's very good. Because three super-powered little girls. Should the manufacturing of super-powered children be illegal? A great travesty has befallen our beloved city. Fuck you, Baltimore! I think it's a very good motivation. It works good for this movie. So anyway, they meet pre-Mojo Jojo being homeless and man, this delivery. You mean, if I take the time to construct my most ingenious plan to help the town to make it a better place machine, then people will come to understand my specialness? Uh. In this movie, Mojo Jojo manipulates the power of girls into building his giant machine to assist to fix all their problems. Also, I really like Mojo Jojo in this movie. Like, legit, he is so good. <laughs> How is this face not a meme? Throughout the movie, he transitions from this hobo Jojo to this character we all know and love in the show. It's really fun. Yes, I'm calling this Mojo Jojo hobo Jojo. It's funny. They say it in the movie. Mm. <laughs> Wait a minute. Gorillas? <gasps> that can only mean one thing. Jack Black is real! This is also basically an origin story for Mojo Jojo as well. Mojo Jojo was also created along with the Powerpuff Girls with the Chemical X thing. I would say this is sort of a retcon, but apparently they mentioned this in the show. There's a season 1 episode where they go over this, so that's neat. So it turns out the giant machine Mojo Jojo manipulated the Powerpuff Girls to build uses Chemical X to create a giant monkey army. This of course backfires on him as his army disobeys him and causes more catastrophe on the town. That just makes this climax really fun. I can tell they had a lot of fun designing these alternative Mojo Jojos. It is here the girls have a realization. Yes! Violence! Violence is the answer! Kill! <laughs> Upon rewatch, I did not remember just how violent this show was. It's been years since I watched the show, and I'm all for it. That's honestly just what the Powerpuff Girls is. Cute girls kicking the shit out of people. It's honestly something the reboot forgot about. So, that's a basic run through of the plot. Now what about the animation? I have to give credit where credit is due. This movie is 20 years old, and it uses a lot of CGI effects, and they don't look bad. I mean, this was the early 2000s after all. CGI was getting a lot better at this time. Cell shaded CGI effects work best for these types of movies. The art style of the show has never looked better in this. I honestly think this is the best the Powerpuff Girls has ever looked. With the bigger budget, this actually gave them the chance to set up a floor plan for the house. And going on, they would use the same design in the show afterwards. Just thought that was an interesting thing to mention. It's one drawing being rotated, that's hilarious. Now with all the positives out of the way, it's time we give a few criticisms. Let's start from earlier in the film. The Powerpuff Girls destroying the town could have been easily avoided if the professor just told them not to use their powers. I mean, to be fair, them having powers was not intentional, so... I don't know, maybe it's a nitpick. Oh, and they learned their lesson about destroying the city, right? Right? So them learning a lesson not to destroy the city? That never really comes back. They don't learn their lesson. It happens a lot in the show. Like, keep in mind, this is a prequel, so everything that happens in the show happened after this. I think the best example of this was the Citiesville episode. In this episode, they move to a new town, it's like they move to a different universe. The style feels slightly different and there's darker colors. Surprise! There are consequences in this universe. This is, like, probably the most realistic superhero universe ever made. Uh, uh you know, it's fine. Superman, he, he takes down a building, it's fine. Oh, but when the, when the Powerpuff Girls do it? Oh, that's bad, we, we, we gotta deal with that shit, okay? That's, that's not good. Of course everyone's angry, why wouldn't they be? Also, I'm not kidding when I say this, there's a pretty identical scene in this episode of them walking home that's just like the one in the movie. This episode came out before the movie? You know, this whole ordeal happened specifically because the professor was arrested the scene before, and on my first watch, I was 100% convinced he wasn't gonna come back for the rest of the movie. Like, I don't know. I feel like if you arrest a character, it feels like the character should be out for the rest of the movie, or at least give us a reason why he got out. 
He comes back later in the movie without any explanation, I just didn't expect that. Man, I had a lot to say about this part of the movie. I am literally this dude from the show. I feel repulsed and disgusted. To be fair, it led to a pretty emotional scene, but I think it could have been done in a better way. On top of that, there are also some inconsistencies. There's a scene where Mojo Jojo needs Chemical X for his machine, so they just go get it. I guess the professor just happened to have more Chemical X just laying around. Couldn't we have seen them, like, sneaking around behind the professor's back? Make it feel like a betrayal of the sort. Also, one plot hole, where did you get that extra Chemical X from Mojo Jojo? Did you not use up all of it from earlier? Where did you get it? Is there something you're hiding from us? Professor conveniently made a cure for Mojo Jojo last minute. Okay, seriously, what the fuck even is Chemical X? What is in this liquid that makes stuff like this happen? Sugar! Spice! Everything nice! These were the ingredients chosen to make the perfect little girls! But Professor Utonium accidentally added an extra ingredient to the concoction! PLOT DEVICE! Some things in this movie just happen because the plot heavily requires it. Now that I'm thinking about it, at the time when they started production of this, the show had already done a lot of the craziest things. Like their best work had already been done beforehand. And making a movie like this means you have to write it in a way for newcomers to the series to enjoy. A theatrical release like this means a lot of people are going to see this movie unfamiliar to the source material. If it was a TV movie made for television, then writers don't have to worry about this stuff. So this really does limit them on what they can do with the movie. So thinking about it this way, an origin story really makes sense. Now flaws aside, there's not that big of a problem I have with this movie. I love the story. The animation is great, the movie itself has some real emotion and love put into it. It's not perfect, but it's not terrible either, so that really only leaves one question. Why did it bomb? Well, there's a few reasons for that. Why did it fail? I really do love how they chose to take the movie to a much more serious tone, but here's the interesting thing with that. When production for the movie started, Cartoon Network executives heavily encouraged cast members to make the movie have an edge. They didn't want some kiddie movie that only appealed to young girls. They wanted, and this is what they actually said, a movie that would appeal to 25-year-old guys. What the fuck? Isn't that the demographic the show made fun of? And here's the weird thing. Executives changed their mind last minute wanting a more kid-oriented movie. Furthermore, barely any marketing. What's that 20 million spent on marketing for? Wait a minute. Who marketed this? Warner Bros. Oh no. Oh no! This seems to be a trend I've noticed with Warner Bros. A lot of their animated movies from this time suffered from this. This is the same thing that happened to Iron Giant. Even Batman Mask of the Phantasm, another movie I looked at, had terrible marketing. And it also bombed. And what did the Powerpuff Girls get? It's not important where it happened. It's not important when it happened. It's not even important how it happened. What is important is... It happened. Hi, what's your name? Ah! It literally tells you nothing about the movie. Just like another movie I looked at! We have 12 days before the movie goes out, where's the marketing? So yeah, Powerpuff Girls had some really lackluster marketing and it was almost non-existent. Now, I'm not saying marketing was the sole reason of this movie's failure. It was a contributor, though. The lack of confidence on the studio's part was not the only thing that failed this movie. Something to talk about is the time this movie came out. In the early 2000s, 2D animation was not looking good. On TV, 2D was the standard, and it still is to this day. Theatrically though, audiences were way more interested in what Pixar was putting out back then. It was an evolving technology. CGI was becoming more and more viable. 3D was in, 2D was out. Even Disney was struggling with their own 2D films. It was a dark time for 2D animation. Nowadays, 3D animation is just standardized for theatrical movies. I mean, look at Spongebob. Even their later movies did this. I'm not saying the movie failed solely out of this reason, but combined with the lack of marketing what was going on with the industry at the time, the movie was destined to fail. The movie was a complete failure. Going forward into 2005, the show would end with its sixth season. 
And I don't think Cartoon Network has ever had a cartoon more iconic than the Powerpuff Girls. I mean, at the time, the Powerpuff Girls was their most iconic show. The mere fact they even considered making this thing really shows what they thought of it. This could have been a household name. This could carry them for years to come, yet it didn't. Cartoon Network wouldn't make another theatrical release until 2018. Teen Titans Go to the Movies had a $10 million budget and it walked away with $52 million. Since Powerpuff Girls, this is the only show that Cartoon Network has ever made that went on to have that kind of recognition. This kind of explains the Powerpuff Girls reboot. This reboot was meant to be their next Teen Titans Go, but that failed for pretty obvious reasons. That show has its own mess of problems to go into, which is not what this video is about. Teen Titans Go is one thing, but I don't think this can carry Cartoon Network forever. There needs to be something new, and I don't know what that could be. As I make this video, Teen Titans Go is going to reach their 10th anniversary next month. That show's been running for almost 10 years. Yeah, Cartoon Network has had a lot of amazing TV shows over the years, but none of them have ever reached that insane popularity with the likes of Spongebob. Cartoon Network just doesn't have that same brand recognition of the likes of Disney and Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon has spent years building up a brand. If Spongebob never took off, they probably would be in the same situation as Cartoon Network. And Disney is, well, Disney is Disney. They've been around forever. They are an entertainment giant. Disney is always going to have stuff to fall back on. I mean, why do you think they continuously do these live-action remakes year after year? Besides Teen Titans Go, Cartoon Network has never really had a repeat of a successful show reaching that kind of recognition. But in a way, I guess that's why I love Cartoon Network so much. They've always been more open to experimenting, getting more out there with their programming. Some of these early Cartoon Network shows really do feel like experimenting for the future Adult Swim. For that matter, Cartoon Network is like the pioneers of adult animation if I'm being honest. I mean, they saved Family Guy. Look at the original pilot of the Powerpuff Girls. They were called the Whoop-Ass Girls. Going forward, the movie would find a new light among fans. DVD sales were one thing, and it would air on Cartoon Network a year later. Overall, with criticisms, the Powerpuff Girls movie is not perfect. But there's genuinely so much effort that went into this movie. When I look at this, I can genuinely see the passion that went into it. It's not a half-assed movie. From the emotion to the action, the pure theatrical quality of the movie, you don't see great zoom-outs like this anymore. Heck, as I mentioned before, there's a Gorillaz cameo, but not even just that, there's also an Aqua Teen Hunger Force cameo. This was made by people who truly put their all into it. I can't ignore that. Cartoon Network was the place where so many artists in the industry got their start, and it's extremely apparent with this movie. With plans of another reboot on the way, it really makes me wonder if they will go with another serious tone. In my personal opinion, the Powerpuff Girls movie is a great standalone movie. There's no need to watch the show beforehand, and it's still a real fun time. With that being said, the movie ends with the Powerpuff Girls saving the day for the very first time. This is a fun one to look at. Thanks for watching.